My goal is to try to do all of them for you. Okay, now I want to make this a little larger. Just to help everybody see it. Uh, the formula S equals 16 T squared is used to approximate the distance S. Notice they're using the letter S rather than the letter D. That's okay. Actually, that's a traditional letter uh, for, for distance. I'm not sure why I have to research that. Anyway, the formula S equals 16 T squared is used to approximate the distance S in feet that an object falls freely from rest in T seconds. The height of a building is 1,242 feet. How long would it take an object to fall from the top? Now, not be thrown, but just fall off the top. Well, I don't know. Let's find out. The goal of all this is to learn how to solve quadratic equations. All right, so we have 1242 equals 16 T squared. The first thing I want to do always is divide both sides by the number in front, as long as it's not in parentheses. OK. So that will make the 16 cancel out over here. And now I'm going to. Why? Why is that happening? Why? Why can't I have both? Twelve forty two divided by sixteen. One, two, four, two divided by sixteen. Enter. Seventy seven point six two five is what T squared equals. Six two five. Okay, well, I have to use the square root method here because I have a squared variable equals a number. And normally, if this were not a word problem, this is how I would handle it. I would take the square root of both sides and put a plus or minus in front of the square root holding the number. However, let's be real here. T is time, and I really am not familiar with negative time. If you take a physics class, you'll find out that one of the meanings of negative time is uh, before you started. But that alone boggles the imagination. So since we're dealing with time equals a number, we have absolutely no use for the negative. So let's just get rid of that. And without any sign at all, there's an assumption that the number is going to be positive. Now, I'm going to take the square root of 77.625. Square root of 77.625, enter. Okay, now guess what I did? I forgot to notice how many decimal places they want you to round to, but I think, I think they want you to round to the nearest whole number of seconds. 
So we're going to do that after I write down 8.81. Oops, well, let's take, I did that. Okay, so we've moved up here, up here, 8.81, and we'll just get rid of that. We'll pretend I didn't do it. And now, since I believe we're being asked to round to the nearest whole number, over here, is where the whole number part of decimals is. And over here is the fraction part, or the less than a whole number part. So I'm going to the part. So here's the whole number, eight. I look immediately to the right at that decimal place, and that's an eight, which is bigger than five, actually bigger than four. Any number bigger, any number five or above in this position will cause the eight to round up to a nine. So I am going to answer T equals nine seconds. Okay, it's going to take a little less than nine seconds for that thing to drop. The object, that's how they refer to it. It will take about nine seconds for that object to drop. So when you know how tall the building is, then all you have to do is solve by dividing both sides by 16. You solve for t squared, t squared equals, and then you take the square root of both sides. And then you look carefully at the instructions to find out how many decimal places you're supposed to round to. Questions about this? Okay, we move on. Oh, here's a nice long one. Okay. After declining between 1940 and the number of multi generational households has been increasing since 1980. Okay, multi-generational means different generations living together. So you might have the, the grandma and grandpa, and then the, the parents and the kids. And if the kids are adults, they might have children, and they're all living in the same house. And this is called a multi-generational household. That's the way everybody in this country used to live before I was born. But before World War II, people lived in multi-generational um, houses. They couldn't afford to go moving out to their own place. That didn't happen until the 1950s. Okay, so the function, this function right here, let me, ooh, yes, how about, this. Ugh, well, that didn't work, did it? Okay. Ah! Stop. Good grief. I will never do that again. That's how we learn. Never mind. I'll just underline it h of x equals 0.012x squared minus 0.573x plus 35.721 
can be used to estimate the number of multi-general, multi-generational households in country A, wherever that is, in the millions, X years after 1940. In what year, in what year were there 40 million generational households? Okay. Now we're not going to write the million because it's understood that whatever number we have here is the millions. Okay, in millions. So we are going to, we could call it H of X, but let's call it P for population. P equals, oh no. How about N equals? That makes more sense. N equals the number of multi-generational MG households in country A This helps you not get all confused. Um, in country A, X years after 1940. So, very important point here, X is the number of years after 1940. Okay, so we want to know when the number, in what year were there 40 million multi-generational households? Now, they're asking for years, in what year, rather, like 19 what, or maybe 20 what. But when we find X, we're just finding the number of years after 1940. OK, so what an ugly, ugly number that is. So 40 doesn't mean years. It means millions of multi-generational households equals this monster right here. 0.012x squared minus 0.573x plus 35.721. Well, it's a quadratic equation, so I have to Subtract 40 from both sides of the equation so I can get a zero over there. So I definitely need my calculator. So 35.721, 35.721 minus 40 is negative 4.279. I better leave that up. Negative 4.279, negative 4.279. Okay, so we'll have 0.012x squared minus 0.573x minus 4.279. Does anybody want to try to factor that? 
Probably not. So, we're going to use the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Understand that that fraction bar starts at the negative sign in front of B. It doesn't start there, it starts here. That's a big mistake students make. Okay, so now my A is 0 0.012, and my B is negative 0 0.573, and my C is negative 4.279. And here we go. X equals negative B, and B is negative zero point, and I'm going to need more room, negative zero point five seven three. plus or minus the square root of, B is negative, so I have to put it in parentheses, negative 0 0.573, parentheses closed squared, minus 4, times A, 0 0.012, times C, which is negative 4.279. All over Woo. 2a, 2 times 0 0.012. I think we're going to call today fun with calculators. OK, calculator, do your stuff. I'm going to find this. The radicand underneath the square root before I do anything else. I always do it that way. I have found out it's actually better for me anyway. So let me clear and here we go. Parentheses, negative, not minus, but negative. 0 0.573, parentheses closed, I, I hit the X squared key. Now I push the minus button for subtract. 4, parentheses, 0 0.012, parentheses closed parentheses opened, negative 4.279, parentheses closed. And I wish it would wrap and not do that. Because I want to make sure I typed everything before I hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to hit enter. Where? Here. Oh, it worked. OK, it worked that way too. So what I have underneath the radical is 0 .5, 0 0.53721. So X equals negative times negative is positive. So 0 0.573 plus or minus the square root of 0 
all over two times this is going to be 0 0.024. Whoo! Okay, now I am going to, let's come up here, round to the nearest whole number. Yes, but you know what? I've learned the hard way that you never round until the very last step. So as much as I would like to round that, I'm not going to. Okay, so there. X equals zero point five seven three plus or minus the square root of zero point five three three seven two one okay and I wrote that correctly. Enter. All right. Well, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. How many decimal places? I think I am going to go as far as the six. The idea is that when you start lopping off numbers at the end, you're going to get a non-exact answer. So if I were wise, I would actually use all those numbers. But it's also true that I have to think in terms of time and what I can remember. So 0 0.73056. There, all over. Goodness gracious, 0 0.024. Okay, now we are finding the number of years after, <coughs> excuse me, coffee. If you see me make a mistake with all these numbers, you holler. Okay. <coughs> X equals 0 0.573 minus 0 0.73056 over 0 0.024. And X equals 0 0.573 plus 0 0.73056 over 0 0.024. All right, now for those of you who have done a quick five minus seven is a negative number, this is a smaller number minus a bigger number. That's going to be negative, and that won't make sense in the context of the problem. But let us go ahead and actually calculate this anyway. Okay. Here we go. Could I move, move this closer? Okay, I'm going to say parentheses 0 0.573 minus 0 0.73056 parentheses closed divided by 0. 0, 0.024. Enter. And we have six and a half, 
6.6 or it would round up to negative seven. Negative seven years after 1940 would be seven years before 1940. No, this is not going to make sense because we're talking about whole numbers of years. So I will write this down, negative seven years, not seconds, years. Which doesn't make sense. So let's go over here. Okay. Now parentheses, zero point five seven three plus zero point seven three zero five six divided by zero point zero two four. Enter. And we have 54 years if we round this because the answer I get is 54.315. Here's the whole number part. That's the fraction part. I look immediately to the right and this three is a number less than five, so it will not the four to round up to a five. So our answer is going to be, well, it's not the final answer, but the answer for X that we're going to work with is 54 years after 1940. Which, I'm getting nervous now, which will be 1994. Let's look at the answer. Ah, thank goodness I did not want to have to do it all over again. Whoa. In that year in country A, the number of multi-generational households rose to 40 million multi-generational households. Okay, so let's look at what we had to do. We had to be really clear on using 40 and not 40 million because we were told that um, um, we're estimating the number of multi-generational households in country A in millions, which means the number we get will be, will represent millions. So 40 represents 40 million. And then thank goodness they give us our function, but there's no way to factor that, come on. So we have to actually use the quadratic formula and sing our little song and not round before the end. And that gives us 54. Now this doesn't mean 1954. This means 54 years after 1940. So you also have to be very clear on X being years after 1940. It's not a year itself. So there are two things here you have to work out in your mind before you do the problem. And so it helps to read it over and over and over again, and even actually write some things down, because that helps to cement it in your brain, in your mind. Okay. Discussion about the steps. Ugly numbers, ooh. But life, alas, 
is full of ugly numbers. We have exactly the same kind of problem here. The story is different. We're talking about military forces, but um, you're still going to have to figure out uh, what year, I think. In what year, yes. So let's go on for now because I want to cop, uh, have a chance to work on each different kind of problem at least once. Aha, a television set. Okay, the diagonal of a TV set is 26 inches long. Its length is 14 inches more than the height. Find the dimensions of the TV set. Okay, so we have a, we have the height and we have the length, but this says that the length is 14 more inches than the height. So that's going to be whatever the height is plus an extra 14 inches, while the diagonal is 26 inches. Well, this, if it were drawn properly, would be a right triangle. So we're talking about the length of the sides of a right triangle. Length of sides of a right triangle. Which means we have to use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, in which the vertical side is usually a, the horizontal side is usually b, but the diagonal side is always, always, always c. So, we're going to come down here and put this in the form a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and c is 26. While a squared is going to be h squared, and b squared is going to be h plus 14 squared. Is that right? Yes, it is. So this is going to be h squared plus h plus 14 times h plus 14 equals whatever 26 squared is. So I'm going to find that out right now. In fact, I also know that when I multiply 14 times 14, that's 14 squared. So I might as well just go ahead and find out both of them. 26 squared is 676 and 14 squared is 196. So, now I have my numbers together. This is going to be 676. So that will be h squared plus, here I go, I multiply the h 
times the H, the H times the 14, the plus 14 times the H, and the plus 14 times the 14, so that I get, whoops, so that I get H squared plus 14H plus 14H plus 14 squared equals 676. So we add our H squares together. We add our H terms together and we square the 14, we get 2h squared plus 28h plus 196 equals 676. And let me make sure that that is really 196 and it is. So now I'm going to subtract, this is a quadratic equation, so I'm going to subtract 676 from both sides of the equation so that I will get a zero over here. So I'll have 2h squared plus 28h minus six minus six is zero. Oh heck, let's do it here. I don't trust myself. There. Um, 196 minus 676 is negative 480. So that's what I've got right now. Now you always want to factor by a GCF when you can. This is two times H squared plus two times 14 times H minus two times 240 equals zero. So I'm going to pull out my common factor of two and then write open parentheses for the leftovers. Just to make sure I'm gonna, that I don't write it twice, I'm going to mark out the two up here so that I can clearly see the leftovers. I'll have H squared plus 14H minus 240 equals zero. Okay. Now this is an equation. I'm not just factoring this to have fun factoring. This is an equation. Whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side and the other way around. So I am going to divide both sides by two just to get rid of that excess two. You can't do that with a variable. When you pull out a variable as a GCF, but you can do it with a number. So this is going to leave me with H squared plus 14 H minus 240 equals zero divided by two, which is zero. And now, we can, we don't have to use the quadratic formula on this. We can use, I think, we can use the quadratic formula. Uh, we can use factoring. And there's a one in front of the H squared now, so I can use the quicker form of grouping. 
I factor negative 240. And very conveniently, so happens that that equals 24 times negative 10. And 24 plus negative 10 equals 14, positive 14, which is what I have here in the B position. So I'm going to write an H here and an H here and a positive 24 here and a negative 10 here and then say equals zero. But what if you don't know your times tables? Then you can use the quadratic formula and it will work. The quadratic formula will always work with any quadratic equation. And as we saw yesterday, some quartics can be changed into temporarily quadratics. Very conveniently, but then you have to change them back. OK, now I set each factor equal to zero. So H plus 24 equals zero. And I subtract 24 of the equation so that I will get that the height of the television is negative 24 inches, which is ridiculous. So I mark through it. Then I come over here, H minus 10 equals zero. I add 10 to both sides, add 10 to both sides. Negative 10 plus 10 is zero. That leaves me with an H equals 10. 10 makes sense. Okay, so let's go with 10 inches and go back up to our drawing. If H equals 10 inches, then the length is going to equal H plus 14, which is 10 plus 14, which is 24. which is how you get 10 here. The height of the TV set is 10 inches. The length of the TV set is 24 inches. So, the reason I knew to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared is that this just happens to form a right triangle. And whenever you deal with finding the length of the sides of a right triangle, you have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then you just slowly work it out step by step. Discussion or questions? OK. Let's go down to the next one. Now this has to deal with numbers. <coughs> it doesn't say integers, it just says numbers, but they end up being integers. One number is five greater than another. The product of the numbers is 126. Find the numbers. OK, well, what is the number? I don't know. So I'm going to call it X. If I knew for sure that this number was an integer, I could call it N. I mean, that's often used. I mean, you have, I mean, of course, you could call it A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever you want. OK, but what I've got here is two numbers, and I don't know what they are to begin with. 
So let us just say, let's get rid of that X. And let us just say this. Let X equal one number. And Y equal the other number. Now you've got to decide which number is going to be five greater than the other one. And since I have a liking for X, I'm going to say one number is, eh, doesn't matter. One number is five more than the other number. And when you multiply them together, product means multiply. Or actually it means the answer you get when you multiply. The product is 126. So we know that X times Y equals 126. But we can't, <coughs> we can't solve this. Okay, I mean, it has two letters. So let's do it the easy way and say, okay, since X equals Y plus five, let's substitute that for X. So I'll have Y plus five times Y equals 126. I can do that. All right, now I am going to take Y and multiply by Y and Y and multiply by five so that I will have Y squared plus five Y equals 126. And then since it's a quadratic equation, I'm going to subtract 126 from both sides so that I will have y squared plus 5y minus 126 equals that 126 minus 126. See, it really doesn't matter whether you subtract or add vertically or horizontally, the job still gets done. So we've got y squared plus 5y minus 126 equals zero. Now, I bet this is factorable. I bet it is. But do I really want to do that? Do I want to go to all that trouble? Why don't we just use the quadratic formula? So A is 1. B is 5. And C is negative 126. And we're going to have y equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a because it's y in this equation. So I have to say y equals or I could get really messed up. I'd, I'd think I was solving for x. All right, so y is going to equal negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 
126 over 2 times 1. And that's going to equal negative 5 plus or minus the square root of. No. Miss Barbara. What did I do wrong? Isn't this a negative? Negative. Yes, one. yes, yes, yes. OK, so that'll be 25 plus because negative times negative is positive. 4 times 126, that's 24. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Is that right? Yes, it is. So that's going to be y equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 529 over 2. So now we try to find the square root of 529 if it is a perfect square. And if it's not a perfect square, we scream a whole lot. Ah, <gasps> okay, okay. So y equals negative five plus or minus 23 over two. And so y has two possibilities. y equals negative 5 minus 23 over 2. And y equals negative 5 plus 23 over 2. And so that means this is going to be negative 28 over 2, which is negative 14. And this is negative 5 plus 23, which will be positive 18 over 2, which is 9. So there are two possibilities here. Since numbers can be positive or negative, we have two choices for Y, and indeed you see two sets of answers. Okay, we know that X equals Y plus five. That means X equals negative 14 plus 5, which is neg negative 9. And if y is 9, we'll have x equals 9 plus 5, which is positive 14. And so since I ended up with y being the smaller number, and you always put the smaller number first, or are they doing that? Yeah, they are. Well, they're putting y first. Probably I should have let it be x, and then it would be all right. But anyway, okay, we're going to have negative 9, negative 14, or negative 14, negative 9, they are going in order. And 9, 14, they're putting the smaller number first in both cases. So let's go on up and look. Yes, 9 and then 14 and negative 14 and negative 9. 
I doubt that it matters. Does it say that? One pair of numbers, both of which are positive, is. Okay, now, it, order is not going to matter. So here you've got one set of answers, and here you've got another set of answers, and which set of answers you use is dependent. You have to read this, one pair of numbers, both of which are positive. So you're going to pick the positive numbers. Another pair of numbers, both of which are negative. There you go. Again, because you're talking about numbers and numbers can be positive or negative. You notice it says one number. It doesn't say one positive number or one positive integer. Um, we just ended up with the right answers by following the right steps. And what we had to do is say, OK, we've got two numbers. And you could have, well, let one of the numbers equal the other number plus five and then substitute so that you get a quadratic equation. And then, yeah, since notice that your answers are um, real and rational, that means you could have factored I was just being lazy. And it almost got me caught. Look at that. Look at that. Almost messed up the whole thing just because of a nasty little negative sign. So be careful. OK, we've got about 15 minutes. Let us see. We've got two problems left, and since I have seen this one on the final exam, let's do this one. And I'll do the other one too. So it'll be in uh, in the notes, the, uh, the last notes for uh, week eight, module eight. Click on modules, come all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see week eight. So one box is made from a 40 centimeter, 40 centimeter by 70 centimeter piece of tin by cutting a square out of each corner and folding up the sides. The area of the, oh no. We've got to know and I cut it off. OK, I don't know. Dumb, dumb, dumb. What are my chances of getting back the same problem? OK, so. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 1015. Right here. OK. There. It's not the same problem. However, at least we have an answer here. The area of the resulting base is 684. So all I have to do is change the dimensions to 30 by 50. Let me do that. And then 684 will be the area of the base of the box right there. So here we go. This will become 30. 
and this will become 50. No problem, and that will not be the answer. OK, so to get the box, the sides get turned up, which means the length of the base of the box, this thing, is going to be the original length, 50, but minus however long that square is and minus however long that square is. So this length and that length will be 50 minus 2x because an x and an x got taken off. For the same reason, excuse me, this side is going to be 30 minus x minus x, which is 30 minus 2x. So this is the length and this is the width. And we know well, this flat base of the box is a rectangle, and we know that area equals length times width when you're talking about a rectangle. So, six, oh, heck, 684, 684, 684, is going to equal 50 minus 50 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x. So I'm going to multiply these together, 50 times 30, 50 times minus 2x, minus 2x times 30, minus 2x times minus 2x. And that will give me 684 minus, equals 1500 minus 100x minus 4, uh, uh. No, ah, minus 60x plus 4x squared. Okay, so 684 is going to equal 4x squared minus 160x plus 1500. And because it's a quadratic equation, a higher order equation, I subtract 684 from both sides so I can get a zero over there, but I have to do it to the uh, <clears throat> other side as well. So, 1500 minus 684, enter, it's 816. So we'll have zero equals 4x squared minus 160x plus Eight sixteen. That is not my music, if you can hear it. Someone outside. OK. Now, I have zero equals a quadratic equation. Always, always, always pull out a GCF. 
And just looking at this, I know four goes into four and four goes into 16, therefore it will go into 160 evenly. But what about that? Yeah, of course. Four into eight, 16. Four goes into eight two times. Two times four is eight. Zero. Bring down the one, that's zero. Bring down the six. And four goes into 16 four times. So yes, it does. So I'll have zero, I will pull out four as my GCF. I'll have X squared minus 40 X plus 204, 204. Then because this is an equation and only because it's an equation, I can do anything I want to the right hand side if I do it to the left hand side, anything I want to the left hand side, provided I also do it to the right hand side. I'm going to divide out the four. Yay! I have a little less to have to deal with. So zero equals X squared minus 40 X plus 204. And now, this is probably factorable, and I probably should put some effort into it. Um, or I could cheat. Oh, we don't know what the answer is. I can't cheat. Oh, that's a pain. Okay, 204. It's gonna equal one times 204. 2 times 102, 3, yeah, 3 into 204, it's going to go 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18, 20 minus 18 is 2, bring down the 4, 3 does go into 24 eight times. So we'll have 3 times 68. And 4 times 51. 5, no. 6, I don't know, let's see. 6 into 204. 12, 18, 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Four. I have 6 times 34. Yes? Tell me, tell me. Did I make a mistake? No, you're good. I was just also doing it with you. I'm doing the math too. Oh, great, great. Okay, now have we got anything good enough now? That's going to, no. Yes. No. <gasps> Six plus 34, yes. Six plus 34 is positive 40. But 204 is a positive number, so it will also equal negative 6 times negative 34. And if you add negative 6 plus negative 34, you get negative 40. Yes. So let's use that. There's a one in front of the X squared, so I can use the easier grouping method. So X, X minus six minus 34. Then I set each factor equal to zero. All right, so X is six. And X is 34. Now I have to choose what makes sense. They're both positive. 
So it's not a problem with one being negative. I have to decide one of them probably does not make sense. And yes, look, if X is 34 and X is 34, then the length of the box, the, the width of the box is going to be 30 minus two times 34, which will be 30 minus 68, which will be negative 38. It'll be negative anyway, which makes no sense. You're not gonna have a side that's negative. So now we know. 34 in the context of this word problem doesn't make any sense, but six does. If X is six, then 30 minus two times six is 30 minus 12 which is 18. Is that right? Yes. And 50 minus 2 times 6 will be 50 minus 12, which is 8, 38. So the length of the sides of the squares is going to be six. There, we conquered the problem. It was not too late and we're able to, we were able to um, factor it. Although I didn't really want to cause I don't like factoring. Not when the numbers are big, but sometimes you just have to do it. I don't like the quadratic formula when the numbers are big. So what are you going to do? OK, everybody is free to go now because it's time to go, but I am going to finish up these problems. Let's see, I've got the Persian rug. And then there was one I skipped. I'm going to do both of them. Yes, I'm going to do both of these. And then you can check back in the week eight module in Canvas and find how to do all these problems. And you'll see the notes there. So here we go. Find the dimensions of a rectangular, so it's a rectangle, a rectangular Persian rug whose perimeter is 18 feet and whose area is 18 feet squared. Okay, the perimeter perimeter equals 18. Perimeter is the length around the outside. The area is A Persian rug whose perimeter is 18 feet and whose area is 18 square feet? How can that be? The perimeter equals the area? Let's see if we get their answers. So the perimeter 2L plus 2W equals eight. And the area, I should say, I should have said P. So let me do that. Let me do this 
the right way without skipping any steps. P equals, this is the formula for perimeter. And this is the formula for area of a rectangle. And they're both 18. That just is so weird. OK, look at this over here. I have a two in both of these terms. I can divide out. In fact, I need to divide out a GCF. What at 24? What is that? Two times L plus W. Divide both sides by two. And I will get nine equals L plus W. Meanwhile, over here, I'll have 18 equals L times W. Well, clearly I need to use one of these equations to solve for the other equation. Um, if I were to use this one, I would say like L equals 18 over W, and I would have a fraction. Ooh. So, instead of that, why don't I say L up? Why don't I subtract W from both sides? So that I have 9 minus W equals L because W minus W is 0. Then, If L equals 9 minus W, I'll put it in here. And so I will have 18 equals parentheses 9 minus W, that's the length, times the width. And then I will multiply, I will distribute the W in to the parentheses. So that will give me 18 equals 9W minus W squared. Now, let me turn this around the right way first. 18 equals negative W squared plus 9w, and then it's a quadratic equation, so I subtract 18 from both sides of the equation. So 18 minus 18 is 0, and that's going to equal negative w squared plus 9w minus 18. So now the leading term is negative. It's got a negative one in front of it. So I need to pull out a GCF that's negative. And that's going to be negative one. So zero equals negative one times W squared plus negative 9 times negative 1 w uh, okay all right plus negative 1 times positive 18 
and I am too close to the edge. I'm worried it's going to get cut off. So let me rewrite this over here. Zero equals negative one times W squared plus negative nine times negative one. That'll give me positive nine back. Plus negative one times positive 18, and that will give me the minus 18 back. So I will pull out the negative GCF, and then mark through it so I don't copy it again, and then write the leftovers. W squared plus negative 9, which is going to be minus 9, plus 18. Whoop. There. And then I'll divide out the negative 1 and divide out the negative 1. So I will have 0 equals, almost lost my 2 there, 0 equals, W squared minus 9W, W, yeah. Careful, careful. There's a W there. Plus 18. Now, does 8, yes, 3 times 6. 18 equals 3 times 6. No. <gasps> yeah. And negative 3 times negative 6. And negative 3 plus negative 6 equals negative 9. Woohoo! The middle term, or the B number. So since there is a one in front of W squared, now a positive one, I can use the easier form of grouping. Zero equals boom, 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 boom. W squared splits apart into W and W, and then I use a minus three and a minus six. And then W minus three equals zero. W minus six equals zero. So W equals positive three and W equals positive six. Now, I believe we can only go with one answer. Aha! But notice that we can go with both. However, the width is always shorter than the length. So the width has to be three and the length has to be six. But what if it weren't? Okay. Um, let's do the, huh? Don't forget to add the W right next to the negative nine. Uh, where you have it scratched off, do you see where you have those? Red <gasps> yes. Oh, you are a thinker, miss. You are a thinker. This would have, okay, if the width is six, then the length would be three. But that would mean that the width is longer than the length, and that can't happen. No, that's wrong. No. Uh, yes, was... yes, that would be right. So we can't choose that. We have to choose L equals 9 minus 3. We have to let the width be 3, 
And then if we allow the width to be three, so let's mark out the six. If we allow the width to be three, then the length will be six. Yeah, there you go. So, the shorter side, which is the width? Oh, the width is the shorter side. The length is the longer side. Yes, now we have that. If we mark that out for width and come over here, you are exactly right. Very, very good. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, Miss Barbara. Yay! Yay! Yay for you! You are just right on top of it. Let's save this and then go back to that other problem. All right, here we are. The number of country A forces in country B decreased, went down to approximately 34,000 in 2014 from a high of about 100,000 in 2008. The amount of country A funding for country B security forces also decreased during that period. This function f of x equals negative 1.309 x squared plus 5.109 x plus 5.517 can be used to estimate the amount of country A funding dollars, in other words. for country security forces, the security forces in country B, in billions of dollars. X years after January 2007. In what year was the amount of country A funding for country B security forces about 10.5 billion. Oh, Lord. OK, let's read this again. The number of country A forces in country B decreased to approximately 34,000 in 2014 from a high of about 100,000 in 2008. The amount of country A funding for those troops that are in country B also decreased during the same uh, period. This function, f of x, equals negative 1.309x squared plus 5.109x plus 5.517 can be used to estimate the amount of country A fu funding in billions. Let's write that down. The amount of money spent, let's put it in English, spent by country A. And X is years after January 2007. number of years.
after January 2007. Which means it could go all the way. Really, we're talking about after 2000, the whole year of 2006. And this funding is in billions. Billions of dollars. Okay. So. All right, now the amount of country A funding for country B security forces was about 10.5 billion in the year. What? So that means if this is after 2007, X would equal one, but I suspect it would be X equals two. Let's see what we get to make sense of their answer. It'll make sense if we go years after 2006. OK, so in place of F of X, we're going to put 10.5 because it's understood that that's billions. So 10.5 equals. Negative 1.309 X squared plus 5.5. 109x plus 5.517 minus 10.5 minus 10.5. 0 equals negative 1.30 nine x squared plus five point one zero nine x minus because that'll be bigger but let's just go with this how totally ugly this is clear okay five point five one seven Minus 10.5. Enter. Minus 4.983. There. Going to erase that before something terrible happens. Now we have A equals negative 1.309, B equals 5.109, C equals negative 4.983. So X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this equals negative 5.109 plus or minus the square root of 5.109 squared, b squared, minus 4 times negative 
3.309 times negative 4.983. And yes, I do wish I could round that to negative 5, but I don't dare. Over 2 times negative 1.309. OK. Here we go. 5.109 squared minus 4 parentheses negative 1.309. They're coming for me. Do you hear the sirens? <laughs> yes. I live three blocks from a firehouse. So you can imagine. All right, negative 4.983. So there. Yes, 5.109 minus 4 times negative 1.309 minus 4.983. OK, enter. 0 0.01, that is not too bad, is it? OK, so X equals negative 5.109 plus or minus the square root of 0 0.010893. All, yeah, all over two. times negative 1.309. I mean, that's almost not there. Now, if we take the square root of that, second x squared, second negative, enter, that's not too bad at all. Not anywhere near as bad as it was. So we're going to have X equals negative 5.109 plus or minus 0 0.1045. Let's do it. Over negative 2.0. 18, which means we have two possible answers. X equals negative 5.109 minus, that's a 9, 0 0.1045 over negative 2.618. And X equals uh, negative 5.109 plus 0 0.1045. It's not 4, 5, it's 4, 4. Look at that. It's a 3, and the 6 is rounding the 3 up to a 4. So let us change that. Four, four, four. Okay, over negative 
Hmm. Okay, so X equals parentheses negative 5.109 minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1044 divided by negative 2.618. This rounds to two. It's 1.99 and then followed by a one, which is about two. And then over here, we're going to have negative 5.109 plus 1.0044. Um, no, I'm getting really tired here. Uh, delete, delete. Okay, so plus 0 0.1044. Parentheses close, divided by negative 2.0. 618. Is that right? 2.618? Yes, negative. Okay, enter. Ah, X. Which is about 2. So both of the answers round to a 2. Two years after the full year 2006. See, that's a trick. January 2007 is the very beginning of 2007. So you're looking at years after 2006. So if you take 2006 and add two, This equals 2008 is when the when the funding was 10.5 in 2008, 10.5 billion. 